Okay guys, so today uh, we've had a lot of rain. Hey Soleil, thanks for coming out. Soleil wants to be in the video too. Uh, and we've had a, a, quite a bit of rain over the last couple days. We're supposed to get another 60 millimeters over the next 24 hours, which is amazing. That's a lot of rain. And you can see right now I'm really close to the road right here and Soleil's taking up the whole frame. But once Soleil's out of the way, um, down here you can see, if you just bring the camera a little bit closer here, you can see that we're getting a lot of erosion here. There's lots of rills that are forming as the water kind of comes across the road. And so in permaculture, we use this mantra of water access and structures. And everybody wants to focus on swales and ponds and water harvesting features. Um, access is kind of the less sexy part of permaculture, but it's, it's super important because you can't manage what you can't access. And so we've got to spend a bunch of time and money this year on making sure that our access is uh, properly set up. And so one of the principles that we talk about in our permaculture design course is the importance of setting up access on ridgelines. And so this road right here is actually on a ridgeline, which means that if it's properly set up, the water will shed off of it. Now a good road should be like a roof it should actually shed water away from it uh, because you don't want water to infiltrate into roads. Otherwise you end up compromising the integrity of the road. You get erosion like you're seeing down here. And then if it's not properly set up, you constantly have to spend money to fix it all the time. So one of the reasons we're getting all this erosion right now is because we have water crossing the driveway. So water is coming from up here in the forest and there's no ditch line along our road here. And so any water that is coming off of this part of the landscape ends up on the road. It has to cross over the road. It then moves laterally this way. And as it crosses over the road, it makes the road soft. So when we drive our cars on it, it's not gonna support the weight. And over time, the gravel gets pushed into the ground, which means I have to constantly reinvest in more gravel. So what we need to do is put a culvert right over here. Right here. And we're also gonna build the road up so that the road level is gonna come up probably about six inches. The ditch will go down to probably another six inches, which will allow us to put a 10 inch or eight inch culvert under the road right here allowing us to cross so that all the water that's coming off of this part of the property ends up in this ditch and in this culvert. Now, while we want to make sure that our house foundation and our roads don't want water, so while we don't want water compromising our foundations and our roads, we don't just want to get rid of that water. We want to keep it in play. We want to think about our permaculture property like a pinball machine. And so water should stay in motion or in play on the property for as long as we possibly can. So all this water is getting shed away from these areas where we don't want it, but it's being focused back into areas that we do want it, which will be a pond over in that direction in the not too distant future. Now, interestingly enough, we dug a test hole recently and I did a video about this already. And as a result of that, we found clay and we found shale. And so the shale we can extract from the hole that will become the pond and that's going to become our road surface which will save us probably seven to ten thousand dollars the clay will be used to seal the pond and so then when water sheds off of this property in these large rain events and in snow melts the water will get stored in that pond for either recreation for swimming or for irrigation at a later use or possibly firefighting or any number of other things that we want to use the water for. Now I wanna leave you with something to think about with regards to permaculture. So every element in the permaculture landscape either wants water or doesn't want water, okay? And so once you know what elements you have to place into your house, like into your property, like a house for example, a house wants water in the taps, but it doesn't want water under the foundation. A road doesn't want water, and so we have to make sure the water gets away from that road. Um, food forests, ponds, um, they all want water in certain amounts. Ponds more than food forests, but both of them need water. And so every element either wants water or doesn't want water. And so that gives us a really powerful tool in design because then we can think about where elements should be placed. So houses and roads should be placed on ridge lines. Ridges where um, 
the, the hummock of the land is going to encourage the water to move away from it. Whereas ponds want to be in valleys, which is where water concentrates. And so we can look at the land form and make decisions about how and where to place elements, just based upon that very simple thing of whether they want or don't want water. And the other thing is that every element either um, sheds water or harvests water. And so a, a road is actually a water harvesting device or a water, it's an element that sheds water. And so because we know that some things shed water and some things harvest water, then it is logical for us to think that when we place an element that's going to create more catchment, more shedding, a road or a roof on a house, that we should also think about where to place water harvesting elements as well. And so a perfect example of that is that our roof up here is a water shedding or water harvesting device. So it allows us to collect water and our garden, and this is not planted this year because we're gonna be doing all this road work, but our garden is where we want to harvest the water. We wanna put it to productive use. And so if we design our rainwater collection system properly, we can collect rain in a tank and then redirect it into these underground swale trails, which are basically just mulched pathways that we dig on contour and flat. And then the overflow from our rain tanks end up going in here and passively irrigate in a subsurface way. And by doing this, so passive water harvesting and storage with mulch, we end up with incredible soil microbiology. And so over time, the soil in here is just gonna continue to improve all on its own because we've got water access and structures right. And so in doing that, when we get the design right, and the way that we get the design right is by following that order of operations, things just start to grow. Abundance just starts to show up. And this is why in permaculture we say work is a failure in design. So if we get the design right, all of these other things happen automatically. Okay, thanks so much guys. We'll see you in the next video. People fail.